Hey family, how you doing? I'm your brother Vimeer D's. Peace to you, peace to your own, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation at you. Uh, and they are building peace also to the Gothic forces, the great spirit of the mother below. This is MT Marathi responding to All Lives Matter. A couple of years back, when Colin Kaepernick first started to kneel, sorry about that, guys. When he first started to kneel, um, all right, a little, little bit of a background here. In the community that I live in, because I talk to everybody, and I do, I talk to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, I'll talk to you. Um, and because white folks tend to feel comfortable around me, they tend to ask me questions about race that other people will not. Now, some, or that they will not ask other people, should I say. They won't ask other black folks, but they'll ask me. Now, because of this, some white folks won't ask me because I will tell them the truth. I'm not scared about telling the truth. And as one as one white guy actually told me, um, he goes, the difference between you and a lot of other people who are talking about race is you come with the facts. And what you say, I may not like, but it's sensible. So I understand. It. I can explain stuff like that. That's just always been who I am. Maybe it's because I grew up around white people. So I understand how to talk white. That stated, when Colin Kaepernick was kneeling, um, one night I went to the store. Um, we have a 24-hour store here. Like, it's a literal grocery store. It's not like a bodega or gas station or anything. It's a grocery store. So it was like 2 a.m. And I was like, man, you know, I really could go for some something that they make there. So I went to get that and some other stuff. And this one older dude who I usually saw there um, stopped me. And he goes, let me ask you something. And actually, um, let me not start with that story. Let me start with one that happened before, because it actually ties into this one. Um, about a week before I had that conversation, sorry about switching up on you like that. Um, <clears throat> this white woman who I worked with, a little short thing, and I'm doing shorter than me too, but she was a spitfire. Um, she... Her daughter, um, who is one of these, it's it's the craziest thing. You're seeing these white women who are trying desperately to attract black men. Um, and I really look at it as the like Francis Cress Welsing and um, uh, Kaba Hiawatha, what they talked about with uh, when there's albinoids within a species, they always move towards integrating themselves back into the natural um, order of things. So uh, they're albinoid, they're born without pigment amongst a pigmented group. They m immediately flip back in and start um, having children with those who are non-albinoid so they can look the same again like everybody else. So th her daughter um, had been absolutely trying to find a black man and i noticed because she was much significantly younger than me like 19 years old i'm in my mid-30s even at the time i was in, well at the time i was just in my mid-30s and so you know we could tell when women are obviously trying to attract us and she was desperately trying to attract me and you know other black men who she thought would bite i wasn't interested but she did get a um mixed man um who had a black mother and a white father uh to have a she won't she said she wanted to marry him but she had a baby rather quickly by him so whatever you may think of swirling it's what it is but that's that's where all this started so the mother of the guy wanted to throw a baby shower and the mother of the daughter was nervous 
um, and actually this was several weeks. This was like maybe a couple months before Colin Kaepernick happened, but all of this led into, you'll see. So she was nervous and we rode the bus together to work. Um, and she looked at me and she goes, you know, this weekend is, um, the baby shower and I'm really nervous, you know, I've never been to a black barbecue. I've never, you know, and I kind of looked at her like, you've never been to, okay, well, I understand that. She's like, I've never been to a black barbecue. What if they don't like me? What if they hate the fact that I'm white? What if they this? What if they that? And I laughed at her and I'm like, honey, um, that's a white problem. And she's like, huh? And I go, that's a white problem, pure and simple. I go, this whole nonsense about, you know, hating you because your color, because your color doesn't match mine. Yeah, black people really rarely do that. I mean, once in a good while, we'll, you know, but you got to have such a negative experience with white people that you just don't want nothing to do with them anymore. But that's a white problem. White people do that. Not black folks, white people. She goes, oh, well, you know, it, it, how do you know it's blah, blah, blah. And I go, how do I know I'm black? But seriously, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You'll see. Let me know on Monday how it goes. Oh, I'm just so worried. And, oh, my God, you know, they, what if they, and I'm like, um, you know, because she kept bringing up this idea that what if they don't like her because she's white. And I'm like, first and foremost, um, her, your, your daughter is dating a guy who has a black mother and a white father. So the mother can't hate white people. I mean, seriously, come on, let's just use our brain for a minute there. And secondly, You'll see, it'll be fine. So Monday comes, and, you know, I sit down, and she's like, oh, my God, it was so awesome. Like, wow. Like, I got there, and they embraced me, and it was like people, there was, you know, white people there, there was Asian people there, there like, the majority was black, but it was awesome. Like, oh, man. Oh, and, like, black folks can cook. Blah, 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 blah. And she was just going on and on and on about how she felt comfortable and how the mother treated her with respect and how the family loved her and blah, 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 blah. And I go, now, honey, now you were all worried that black folks were about to treat you wrongly and they all embraced you. Now, your family, let's say that because uh, the boyfriend was on the lighter end. I go, let's say that you take your boy, take her boyfriend to a family gathering of yours. Is he going to be treated the same way? And she, I will never forget this, man. She got really quiet. And then she kind of smirked a little bit. And she's like, yeah, no. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm like, remember that. Remember that. Fast forward a couple of months later. And it's so weird because the ancestors, you know, I, I told her to remember that. Next time when people talk about black folks hating white folks, because it ain't our fault. It ain't our problem. It's white problem. It's a white issue. So a couple months later when Colin Kaepernick was kneeling, she was so heated. Oh, it's disrespecting the flag. And why does he hate America? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Cut that out. I recounted to her a couple of stories about how um, servicemen, black servicemen, were not respected when they came back from fighting um, in wars and how some of them were even beaten up and killed. So don't, you know, I was like, don't give me that disrespect in the flag garbage. And secondly, remember back when your when your son, your because they were now um, engaged, your future son-in-law took you to... Uh, the cookout and the cook and you were so afraid that black people were going to hate you. And then you were all surprised when black folks didn't hate you. And I kept telling you that this is a white problem. She goes, oh, yeah. I'm like, and I also told you to remember the fact that you said that if you took your daughter's soon to be husband to a cookout with your family, that your family would not respond the same way and you know that some of your family would not respond the same way as his family responded to you yeah then what's your problem well doesn't can't he just do it another way 
Oh, like we've been to, what? I couldn't believe it. Now to the original story. So I was at this, I was at the grocery store, 2 a.m. Guy pulls me over and wants to talk to me about Kaepernick and Black Lives Matter also, like he brought that up. He goes, I just don't understand that. You know, Black Lives Matter to me, all lives matter. And so I don't see the whole reason why why he needs to kneel. Can't he do it some other way? And I'm like, well, black folks been protesting for decades now and y'all don't listen to that. So now you're pissed at him doing a nonviolent thing, kneeling. I mean, what else can we do? What else can we do? Well, I told him the story then about, um, oh, no, actually, I didn't tell him yet. Um, so he's like, well, I'm a, I'm a Vietnam vet. And when I was fighting in Vietnam, I had black people in, in my company and we fought together and we, you know, bled together and all of that. And there was no color. And I'm like, that, that's just not, no, that's not true. I go, did you know that the Pentagon had written a memo that got leaked to the public, which stated that they were, that they wanted to, um, draft more <clears throat> black men onto the front lines of the Vietnam War to kill or injure them to ensure that black men, that less black men became radicalized here in the States. And he goes, no, 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 I didn't know that. And I go, massive racist right there. Just massive racism. And you can go and look it up. It's true. It happened. So while you're talking about there wasn't no color over there, maybe on the ground, but at the government level, there was absolutely. And I guarantee there was a lot of people, um, generals and stuff who came from the South and even from the North who didn't like black folks. You just didn't know it. You just didn't know it. So <clears throat> he goes, yeah, but it just, I mean, seriously, we didn't matter. He goes, let me just tell you the story about um, me and two of my uh, black comrades when we were, you know, in the military. We were down in Texas. It's late at night. And we had just got off, got home for shore leave. And um, it was me and two other black guys. And I was like, yo, man, we, you know, can we get some food? You know, do we need less, or he goes, we needed, we decided that we needed to get some food. So <clears throat> one of the black guys said, I know exactly where to go. And he told me, he stared me towards this um, black barbecue that was happening. Hey, it's Texas, man, you barbecue into the night. And it was a large gathering. He goes, nothing but black folks there. We pulled up, get out the car. Um, they go off and do their thing. And I'm a white guy walking in the middle of these guys. And this black girl, the young black girl walks up to me, hands me a plate of food. And um, I sit down, I'm talking with people and I'm eating. And I go, okay, what year was this? And I think he said like, 69 or 70 and i go okay a couple of things first and foremost 69 or 70 if you were black in texas and you said the wrong thing to um a white guy you could get you you and your family could find themselves on the wrong end of a rope and he's like well i was a northerner man that wasn't gonna I go i don't care you're, you're still white that's a fact and right now, you haven't told me that you talked to these people before that point, so they don't know you from Adam. Okay, so that's one. <clears throat> Two, that's just how black people are. You know, we, we're we not the ones with the problem. I told them about um, an American dilemma and how they found, did this extensive research of the South and figured out that it wasn't black folks with the problem, it was white folks with the problem. Boom. But um, I also told him the story about the girl going to a black barbecue and figuring out, oh, my God, you know, they loved me. They loved me. And but yet when I asked her about her family, she said that they may not um, uh, accept that colored man as readily as the black folks accepted her. And then I dropped the bomb on him. 
I said, when you walked into that place, nobody's seen your color. And he goes, and that's how it should be. And I go, up. Because in that moment, when you walked into that black space, all lives mattered. All lives mattered. All of them. For black people, all lives matter. Go, but let me ask you a question. Let's flip it. You and these two black servicemen drive up in the middle of the night to a Texas barbecue and it's white people as far as the eye can see, just like it was black people as far as the eye could see. You and those black men get out and you watch some barbecue. Will those white folks have the same response to those black men as those black people had to you? And he thought about it and he goes, no. Uh, uh, I don't believe they would. And I go, that's because to them, black lives don't matter. And you literally saw his eyes turn on and he goes, oh my God, wow. And he shook my hand and he goes, I see it now. I understand now. I get it now. Wow. Wow. No way, man. Wow. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, most of us don't know how to argue as black folks, okay? <clears throat> you, there's actually things you can look up online on arguing. There's actually structure to argue or to arguments. There is. Black people are made for debating because we remember every damn thing. We are made for debating. This is why a group of black, like, losers ended up beating the Yale debate club because we, we can, we do this anyway. We have the answers. The problem is, is we just don't understand the questions that we should be answering. So for instance, what is racism? Okay. Why is Black Lives Matter <clears throat> important and why shouldn't we be saying all lives matter? <clears throat> the problem, excuse me, the problem with the people who are against this idea with um, Black Lives uh, Matter, the problem with them is that they know it is effective and that it is true, that Black Lives don't matter. So they have to confuse it. What I did with this man was I allowed him to prove it to himself. That's what you got to allow these people to do. You have to allow them to prove it to themselves. Because ultimately, and, and well, ultimately, they ain't going to believe it if they believe you just imposed your beliefs onto them. And you can't allow them to run from this reality. When that woman <clears throat> didn't want to accept Colin Kaepernick's right and need to kneel, I didn't let her run from that. I made her I made her look at the realities as they were, not how not as she wanted them to be. And that is part of the trick. Cuz white folks are really good at doing that. They're really good at just hiding from stuff they don't want to see. So with the man, he was way more open to it. Um and the reason why he was open to it, I think, and he actually told me this, was because <clears throat> he goes, you know, you, and I, I, look, I hate this because it makes me appear like I'm better than other black folks. He goes, you know, you seem thoughtful. You know, every time I talk to you, you're on target and on point with various things, so you seem thoughtful. We have to get our minds on this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about metaphysics. It's about the stuff that is hardcore that's impacting us now. If we don't do that, I, you know, I can't help you. I mean, and we aren't going to be able to help um, ourselves answer these questions and take away the problems. Uh, or should I say solve the problems? that we are finding ourselves in.
the answer to why Black Lives Matter is important and why we shouldn't be talking about All Lives Matter is really simple. <clears throat> to black folks, all lives have mattered. To white folks, no. Uh-uh. And look, it's even easier than that, I suppose. Um, all we have to do is look at Trump. All we have to do is look at Trump. Trump is going after red, brown, red and brown people, and he's trying to segregate red and brown people from black people by acting as if black people are different than red and brown people. That's a fact. That's a fact. We can win this fight, and we can do it intellectually using the skills that we have. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.